there we go. Thanks, Jason. Making dinner and, and, you know, he's on the East Coast, so he kind of got confused about the time. <laughs> Oops, wrong person. There you are. Sorry, Deborah. <laughs> Deborah, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm really hungry now. Craig's talk really made me want to go get something good to eat. There, there we go. All right, All right. so if you want to, is he spotlighted? No, oh, I've got to go on, oh, I've got to go on that. Speaker view. There you are. It's so hey. good to see you. Okay, yeah. so you ready? You're, I'm ready you're our you. closer. How does that feel? Good, good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to disappear. You go ahead and you have okay. your and I'll be right here. Remove me. Um, where is? There we go. That's better. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, coming out to listen to me uh, speak. Uh, tonight, I'd like to start by introducing myself briefly. So my name is J.D. Sword. I'm the host of the podcast, The Devil in the Details, where I talk about topics of interest to both skeptics and Satanists. So a lot of exorcism, demonic possession, uh, the satanic panic, which, of course, we'll be talking about tonight. I'm a writer for Skeptical Inquirer. I've done articles about Catherine Hepburn's Haunted House, demonic text messages, demonic possessed cats, um, a live exorcism by the one and only Bob Larson. Um, I write for AIPT Comics. Uh, I give skeptical analysis of movies like The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, and TV series like Fall River and The Sons of Sam. Uh, I'm a member for the Center for Inquiry, the Gorilla Skeptics of Wikipedia, like Susan mentioned, and the uh, Church of Satan, although tonight I'm not going to be uh, speaking on behalf of the Church of Satan. So today I'd like to talk about the belief, a uh, very dangerous belief, that a highly organized and clandestine cabal of devil worshippers are trafficking children across the country and whose members occupy the highest echelons of power. And that definition applies equally as well to the satanic panic as it does to QAnon. And the reason for that, I will argue, is very simple, because they're the same thing. According to a recent poll by the Public Religion Research Center, roughly 14% of Americans, that's 30 million people, uh, fall into the category of QAnon believer. Um, that's as many as all white evangelical or mainline Protestants. And it's not just people on the lunatic fringe. 36 congressional candidates for the uh, 2022 midterm election, that's this year, uh, have expressed some level of support for QAnon ideas, a very dangerous set of beliefs which have inspired real world violence. From the uh, member of the Gambino, crime, the Gambino crime boss, Frankie Calli, who was murdered for being a member of the uh, deep state, to uh, Matt Coleman, who murdered his 10-month-old and 2-year-old because he believed they had reptile DNA. QAnon is something that skeptics, neither skeptics nor Satanists, can take too seriously. Uh, and as such, we need to begin by understanding where it came from. You know, how did we get to this point? So accusations of uh, ritual child sacrifice and cannibalism are nothing new in Christianity. The Romans accused the early Christians of the same. Uh, rival Christian sects accused one another. Throughout the Middle Ages and uh, the more than 200-year history of witch trials and heretic trials, uh, people were hung or burned at the stake for uh, such, a, such crimes. But for our purposes, we're going to start with the satanic panic of the 1980s and the 90s. So what was that? How did it begin? In a nutshell, the satanic panic was like QAnon, but on a much wider scale. Uh, you had police officers, social workers, psychiatrists, all believed this idea that these devil-worshipping cults were real and killing millions of children every year. 
And the public came to believe this because the idea was validated and disseminated through TV talk show hosts like Oprah, Sally Jesse Raphael, and of course, Geraldo Rivera. So how did that all start? So let's begin with the 1960s. There was a tremendous change in the cultural landscape, along with interest in mind-altering drugs and the sexual liberation. Uh, there was an explosion of interest in alternative religious practices, the occult, parapsychology, astrology, uh, what was called Eastern mysticism. And as a response to that, we saw not only the birth of the modern skeptic movement, but also the founding of the Church of Satan in 1966 by this man, Anton Xander LaVey. Uh, Satanism, as codified by Anton LaVey, was and always has been atheistic and law-abiding. It holds both animals and children in the highest regard as the purest forms of carnal existence. Nevertheless, the prejudice uh, persists that Satanists are lurking around every corner, looking to snatch up your children. Uh, and part of the reason for this uh, was that Christian, Christian evangelicals at the time really believed that they were living during the end times, that their Christian way of life was being, uh, was being threatened and uh, undermined by secularism. Uh, part of that response was to uh, try to use the medium of entertainment to spread the gospel and call people back to the church. So these two movies, Rosemary's Baby, which was released in 1968, and The Exorcist, which was released in 1973, really scared the hell out of people, or rather into them. Uh, it really brought people uh, kind of, kind of, you know, back into the fold. Uh, but then you also saw an industry of uh, so-called ex-Satanists crop up, folks like Mike Warnke, America's number one Christian comedian. And Warnke made millions talking about his time as an alleged satanic high priest, uh, starting with his 1972 book, The Satan Seller, and throughout his uh, comedy act. Now, Christian comedy, you might think that sounds like good, clean fun for the whole family, but... Warnke's act was he would intersperse uh, lurid tales of his time as a satanic high priest throughout his, his jokes. So then in 1980, the book Michelle Remembers was published, uh, purporting to be a memoir of Michelle Smith as she recovered repressed memories of childhood abuse at the hands of devil worshippers under hypnosis by her therapist and future husband, Lawrence Pazder. Uh, and Michelle Remembers really kickstarted the satanic panic proper and would go on to become the blueprint by which future cases of satanic ritual abuse, uh, which is a term that Lawrence Pazder made up, uh, would be evaluated. And even though uh, Michelle tended to kind of avoid the limelight, uh, uh, Pazder, on the other hand, would go on to uh, travel the country and give uh, talks to law enforcement. He was part of this group called the Cult Crime Impact Network, uh, which would kind of go around and lecture to law enforcement and kind of push this narrative of uh, cult crime and what to look for. Uh, both Pazder and Warnke would go on to appear on primetime TV. They were on the 2020 program uh, called uh, the ABC program 2020 in an episode called The Devil Worshippers. And Pazder, of course, would later go on to be a consultant for probably the most infamous uh, court case to come out of the satanic panic, the McMartin trial. Now, you might think that if it were really true that millions of children were being killed every year, as believers of these uh, in these cults claimed, at least some evidence of these crimes uh, would probably be found. If satanic ritual abuse survivors like Michelle Smith and ex-Satanist high priest Mike Warnke were coming forward with the truth, you might believe that at least some of these cultists ought to have been uh, accused, if not brought to justice, right? Wrong. In fact, uh, absence of evidence was actually taken to be um, proof as to how powerful and influential these cults were. Uh, apparently, they could destroy... Uh, any and all forensic evidence, but they just couldn't shut up a six-year-old girl and a, a Christian comedian. Um, and what kind of evidence was presented as proof of these cultists, you might ask? 
Well, virtually any piece of graffiti depicting uh, an upside down cross or a pentagram was interpreted as being uh, proof that cults were operating in the area. And the second most pervasive piece of evidence of defective detective work was uh, animal mutilations. In the 70s, there was this panic in the Midwest over uh, livestock deaths. You know, farmers would find their livestock supposedly drained of blood with marks that were made with allegedly surgical precision. And in the 70s, they were blamed on aliens and UFO abductions. Well, during the satanic panic, the blame shifted to cultists. And in each case where proper investigations were performed by qualified professionals, the marks on the body were found to be consistent with natural predation and scavenging. But what about the recovered memories of satanic ritual abuse? Can memories of childhood abuse really be repressed, then recovered years, even decades later? Now, this is a very controversial topic. Memory researchers and psychologists such as Elizabeth Loftus say no. Our best current understanding of how memory works is not compatible with repression. There's no explanatory mechanism that's currently uh, accepted. It's much more likely that alleged repressed memories of childhood abuse are uh, what are known as false or pseudo memories. Even so, psychiatrists and repressed memory advocates continue to insist that uh, memories recovered during therapy are genuine, and some subset of them continue to believe that satanic cults do in fact exist. How did skeptics and Satanists respond to this back then? And you know, what can we do moving forward today with, with QAnon? Uh, well, representatives of the Church of Satan appeared on various TV talk shows at the time, like Sally Jesse Raphael, dispelling myths about Satanism, and the administration uh, consulted with and continues to this day to consult with law enforcement on cases of alleged cult crime. Um, they also consulted with the Committee for the Scientific Examination of Religion when they published their report, Satanism uh, in America in 1989 at the height of the Satanic Panic. Anton LaVey would uh, grant interviews occasionally. He was very selective of who he spoke to though. Uh, one of the more important interviews at the time was to investigative journalists, John Trott and Mike Hurtenstein, who were ultimately the ones who published the expose article that outed Mike Warnke as a fraud. So one of Warnke's many uh, claims was that he had flown to San Francisco in this satanic meet and greet where he met Anton LaVey. Excuse me. And Trot and Hertenstein, to their credit, actually uh, interviewed Anton LaVey, and he set the record straight, saying uh, in no uncertain terms, the idea that I called a meeting in San Francisco, or if I had, that I would have invited him is absolute bunk. There's no way I would have had any dealings with Warnke. Uh, another example of direct action was a lawsuit filed by Anton LaVey against Pazder and the various publishing and distribution companies responsible for Michelle Remembers, claiming that the book was defamatory. Um, while the lawsuit did nothing to stop the sale of the book or undo the damage that the book would cause, uh, it did, however, squash a movie deal that was in the works at the time. So much the better. Finally, in 1992, FBI Special Advisory Agent Kenneth Lanning published his Investigator's Guide to Allegations of Ritual Child Abuse, in which he concluded absolutely no evidence to support that satanic cults exist. Which brings us to today. A lot of people point to Pizzagate in 2016 as the birth of QAnon, but the same kind of fears and conspiratorial delusions that fueled the satanic panic drive QAnon today. The difference is that the ideas no longer need to be validated or disseminated by the mainstream media because the ways in which people are exposed to information is vastly different. Uh, it's much, much easier in the age of algorithms to be led down the rabbit hole, and the general public already believes that by passively consuming uh, suggested videos or reading tweets that they're doing their own research. So what exactly can we do about this? And, you know, the kind of true crime model TV shows that, that I've talked about for AIPT comics and stuff, you know, they also d don't help. Uh, first, I think that we need to get serious about it. It doesn't matter how silly or ridiculous or inconsequential something is. Uh, no claims should go unchallenged. What we as skeptics think is dumb could be what starts someone down the path of QAnon. So, you know, the, the, the two 
the two TV series here, Fall River and Sons of Sam, you know, by no means were were they huge hits. I, I think maybe uh, Sons of Sam was trending on Netflix for maybe about a week, um, but you know, ultimately it wasn't really anything to write home about. But that's not to say that some people might not watch that and think, you know, oh wow, that was really compelling, or I didn't know that. And you know, that could be all all it takes to to kind of lead them down the rabbit hole. Uh, Another great example is um, Emma Romero, PhD grad student at the University of California, just published an article in the first Skeptical Inquirer volume of this year discussing the current state of satanic ritual abuse. So yes, despite undergoing a name change and a facelift, it's still an idea, a set of ideas that's very much alive and well today. Uh, and QAnon simply isn't going to go away. Those of us who advocate for a scientific worldview and critical thinking, I, I personally believe, must defend and promote those now more than ever. The, the hardcore believers of QAnon might be set in their belief, but hopefully some people are not too far gone and they can be reasoned with. Um, and, you know, I'll be honest, this is not an area that I'm particularly good at. I, I think it's important. I think it needs to, to happen. But like with... Uh, anti-vaxxers and COVID deniers, personally, I'm to the point where I'm like, you know, okay, just, just get away with, get away from me. I don't even want to talk to you. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's important. It's, it's a dialogue that needs to happen. And someone who does do an excellent job talking with conspiracy theorists and whom I think we could all learn a lot from is the author of Escaping the Rabbit Hole, Mick West. I highly recommend his book. Um, to anybody who, you know, is interested in how people come to believe in conspiracy theories and, you know, how to carry on a dialogue, uh, a dialogue with them. And if we want our ideas to be heard, you know, we need to understand how to talk with people instead of talking down to them because nobody wants to be condescended to. Um, it's like my friend Kenny Biddle always says, you know, listen to Patrick Swayze, be nice. So it's my hope that together, uh, we can conjure the devil of doubt to come forth and call mankind to challenge all things and question all things with the Luciferian light of reason to guide our way ever forward through these times. Because, you know, QAnon, it's, it's not, it's not going to go away. You know, here we are, we've had a change of guard and they're still going strong. It's kind of like um, the Millerites, you know, some people have, have drifted away, others they're going to carry on until who knows when. So if anybody wants to learn more about the, the Satanic Panic or QAnon or any of the other topics that I've mentioned, you can find my podcast, The Devil in the Details, on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere that you listen, you know, listen to podcasts. You can read my articles for a Skeptical Inquirer at skepticalinquirer.org or, you know, go grab yourself a physical copy. The November-December issue, um, I talked about the true case behind The Exorcist. And Ben Radford and Kenny Biddle did an excellent uh, examination of, of the true story behind a, another film, The Entity. Uh, you can read my articles for AIPT Comics at aiptcomics.com. And I've made appearances on uh, Kenny Biddle's Skeptical Help Bar on his YouTube channel, I Am Kenny Biddle, and the YouTube channel that he co-hosts, Three Tortured Souls, uh, as well as uh, another satanic podcast um, similar to mine, The Demented One. So with that, uh, thank you all very much for your time and attention, and I wish you all well. Fantastic. What a good speaker. Just great. Nice way to uh, end the, the series with a nice upbeat talk on sa satanic and Satanism. <laughs> but actually, it was very, it was very positive. It's very positive. I, I really like that. Let me get me to, there I am. Oh, look, I am. You're cutting off my horns. Is in here. Hold on. I love that hat. That, I love that hat. It's so cute. I've been wearing it all for months. And, and I'm not <laughs> kidding. People will come out and they will... Uh, um, talk to me and say, hey, I love your hat. That's so great. I might wear something like that. I'm thinking, well, go ahead. I think it's great. 
Oh, it looks very warm. I think I could use it. Oh, it is very warm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're colder in a colder place than I am. Okay, let's see what questions we have. So, although the Church of Satan may support rational, constructive ideas, is it a good or bad example of bad marketing or being self-defeating? I mean, no offense, but would you not agree that a group that associates itself with Satan would likely turn away people who might be sympathetic to the skeptic cause? So I, I just kind of had a, um, a similar talk about that because um, there's, there's a group, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to name, I'm not going to name who they are, but purportedly they offer uh, services to people who have been accused of satanic ritual abuse. Um, I guess in terms of, you know, counseling or understanding what their legal rights and everything are and you know my whole thing was there's maybe there's not other groups that do that currently i, I know there used to be one I, I think it was called like the false memory association or something something like that but i think the group ended up enfolded but but my whole thing is if if you are allegedly part of this conspiracy, if people think that you are to blame, it seems like a bad idea to put yourself out there trying to help somebody's cause, you know, while kind of beating the drum. So, you know, maybe in a sense, some people might be turned away from skepticism, you know, because they kind of see the, the branding that I have. And, you know, that's, that's fine with things like satanic ritual abuse and false memory. I would never kind of put myself out there with, you know, I would never involve myself in somebody's particular case, you know, because, of, you know, it, it, it very well might hurt them. I think, however, some people might kind of see what I see in the sense that, you know, if a certain kind of religious mentality is closed-minded and detrimental to science, you know, and the idea is that you're supposed to take things on faith and not question, then having that kind of belief and reason and the element of doubt is something that's satanic. So I think some people, you know, might appreciate that and pick up on it. And it speaks to, uh, it speaks to skepticism in a way that other people don't pick up on. You know, for example, with the Church of Satan, uh, ritual magic is an undeniable part of the religion. You know, Anton LaVey believed in and practiced magic, and that's not to say that as, a, as an individual Satanist you have to, but you can't pretend that it's not part of the canon and it's not part of the history. And I think some Satanists have an idea of skeptics as, well, those are the people that they just want to debunk everything. You know, they don't, they don't believe in it. They, they, they're not willing to, to even kind of examine the evidence for it. They think it's, you know, they think it's bullshit. They think that, that we're crazy, we're stupid. And that kind of turns them off. So what I hope to do is kind of present sort of a different flavor of skepticism and kind of bridge bridge the gap between. So I think that was a very rambly kind of answer, but I hope it, I hope it addressed well, that. I have an answer, too, to follow up on that, J.D., is um, I don't know if anybody remembers uh, Penn and Teller Bullshit, the show mm -hmm. that we played on Showtime. And when years ago when that came out, gosh, it's been years ago, the um, we used to have a forum at the JREF where it was before Facebook, where we could actually talk to each other, kind of like, you know, we could gather. And so there was a huge community. People would say, what brought you to skepticism? And a large chunk of people said they had seen bullshit, uh, the Penn and Teller show. And that brought them to the forum and, and to skepticism and things. And I thought, I hate that, you know, they just, the TNA, I just couldn't stand it. And the, <laughs> and the use of profanity and I, I just didn't like the personality. I like Teller a lot, but he never really says anything. But I really like the person. Uh, I liked uh, the message they were doing. Sometimes they got a little simple, simplistic, 
but I, I, I really wasn't into it. But so many people told me, I loved that. That was great. They were just right out there in your face telling you this. And, and I got a lot out of it. And I liked the TNA and all that. And I thought, and, and the consensus within our, within the discussions we were having is it takes all kinds of places, all kinds of areas of people doing it in a different way. You know, maybe this satanic, uh, Satanism might not be the way, but maybe this other area is, and to pull it all in, whatever it is that draws people in and getting to become critical thinkers. Do you want to talk about the after-school Satan program? Do you know anything about that? Well, I know that the acronym, I know what the acronym spells. Um, I don't particularly. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean, it, it has no affiliation with the Church of Satan. Um, I have my personal opinion on it. If that's if that's what people are asking for. No, I was uh, the GSW project wrote the after school Satan project right as it was kind of just hitting the news just at the very beginning, and it's already had one hundred eighty four thousand views. So it was it's a it's was at, it was made because the Good News Society, which is that very Christian right um, after school program that is very dangerous to children. I mean, it teaches hellfire and 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 just this awful world but i think the after school satan um teaches like a non-bully non you know just kind of a ah, you know uh science pro science um pro science kind of thing but you could talk a little bit about some of the satanist things that they do too because i've seen some amazing things that the satanist uh the church of satan has done well uh, i mean after school satan that that was not actually the church of satan no, uh, it's not. It's something else. But it's yeah. I mean, as far as, a messaging. I mean, as far as you know, I, I don't think religion has any place in schools, and I think that there's other organizations and clubs that already do a you know very fine, commendable job of uh, teaching science and advocating for science in schools. Mm -hmm. When uh, when I read a lot of the. Uh, him at Metha's uh, posts on, he was used to be posting on Patheos, the friendly atheist, and he talks a lot about what's happening in religion. And it was post after post where, you know, some religion in the South or wherever the Bible Belt was trying to push through something, you know, a, a tablet, one of those mm -hmm. Ten Commandment tablets, or whenever they're going to put, uh, they were going to hand out, they were handing out Bibles or whatever. It always came down to, all right, call in the Satanists, because that was that was the ultimate answer. You know, whatever you couldn't get them to stop pushing whatever religious thing was going on, the Satanists were like, okay, well, if you're ask, if if it's okay for this religion to do it, then we, it's okay for us. We're going to put up our what's his name, Bo, Bo the Bo Baphomet. Yeah, Baphomet statue right next to the Ten Commandment one. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. And and shut things down. They were like, ooh. Well, I, I, I'm not very well versed on that, but I, I, you know, I don't believe that it was the the statue that that kind of brought an end to that. And the threat of a statue. I would. I thought. It you know it doesn't always work. I mean, then you just end up with one more religious icon. You know, I don't think they've ever been able to get one up and to stand. Putting up a state house, but it's it's pulled down a lot of other stuff. So I had a question from Jeff. He says, with the understanding that adherents are not a monolith and that there are multiple organizations in play, how mm -hmm. much of modern Satanism do you reckon is earnest and how much of it amounts to a cosplay? Like my hat. Oh, I mean, it. I think that depends on, you know, a lot of different things. That, that kind of depends on the individual. Um, you know, some people, I think, definitely want to play it being a Satanist because they want to just get a rise out of Christians or, you know, maybe they have a certain idea about what that means. Um, you know, and other people, you know, we always say that Satanists are born, not made. That was something that, that Anton LaVey very much believed in. And, you know, I think that's kind of how you can tell, you know, who's really sincere about it somebody who will tell you, you know, yeah, I read the Satanic Bible and 
it was kind of like looking in a mirror. It was like, wow. So, you know, that's kind of putting uh, an identity on how I've always felt and, you know, who I've always been. Yeah, I, I think, I think it's, like I said, it, all areas are needed. And if this didn't work for the one, that's fine. It's, it reaches out to another personality somewhere else that this is like the best thing that they've ever had. I think it's, I think it's great. I think we should embrace all kinds of, um, uh, of avenues. And I, I think it's, I think it's been, I don't, I'm not a member of the, of uh, the, the church, the, I, but then I'm not a member of any churches and I have, I don't even really, um, participate much in the, uh, the other, satir the, the satirical group, um, the newly appendage, the flying spaghetti monster. I think it's funny, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. I, that's not my, I mean, I, I will, but I'm really not so much into the atheist community as some people are I'm more into the scientific skepticism stuff because I like that kind of stuff too. But um, I'm hearing lots of comments about what a great talk you did. Great slide presentation too. I'm going to send <laughs> that stuff to you because uh, that's, I'm going to have you do my slides, yours or Adrian. And um, yeah. And oh, the question, the satanic temple is strictly atheist, isn't it? Yes. As well as the church of Satan as well as the Church of Satan, yeah, which is, and I think anytime you're having a conversation with somebody too, right, you know, if you can have a conversation and I'm not angry and yelling at you, if you, if people see your, your uh, medallion and they want to have a reasonable talk or whatever, if you can talk to them and, and give, give me your elevator pitch for like one floor, JD, like if you're in an elevator with somebody <laughs> and they see your medallion, you got one floor, what is it you're going to say? They're going to go, isn't that the satanic thing or whatever well typically uh, you know it, it it would it would depend on where i was as to whether or not i you know would be presenting it you know uh what's more you know is, is it more prudent for me to to kind of tuck it hide it or is, you know do i feel comfortable enough that no one's going to bother me i mean if somebody if somebody asked and some some people will have have noticed and found out you know I, I i would say you know yes yes it is and kind of just leave it at that if they have questions you know i would address the questions as they come mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the skeptics i guess too people are constantly trying to get us to change our name to something else with you know the brights or something i don't know what they want to do but it's like, yeah they're like oh but skeptics are like skeptics of climate change it's kind of it's like you know we're not going to find a better word we're already skeptical. Let's just embrace the damn thing. And right, it's a chance right. of having a conversation with a person, because that's almost the first thing out of my mouth is, yes, we are skeptics. We are critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. We're not anti-vax, anti-climate change, anti, mm -hmm. you know, we are uh, following the science on things. Mm -hmm. And so, and then depending on their answer and the look on their face, if it looks startled or they're nodding or they're smiling, then maybe you would give them a little more information or you know, how many elevator stops you got to go. That's one, of the, that, that's one of the things, you know, people will sometimes ask is, you know, well, why, why the name Satanism or, you know, why the name Church of Satan, you know, isn't it just essentially humanism? You know, why, why couldn't it be something that's more, uh, more welcoming or friendly? And it's like, well, because we don't necessarily want to be welcoming and friendly. You know, we don't want everybody to kind of come in under the tent flaps you know if if you if somebody finds it as a sticking point then that's kind of on them mm -hmm. and they can approach as they feel comfortable you know but the people that that see it and they are intrigued or they see it and they get it you know th those are the kind of people that i think you're more likely to have a productive conversation with absolutely so i want to uh, in this by saying that if anybody is interested, he gave you a whole bunch of different sites, the things that you could you could look and find more on, uh, find more on JD, but uh, he writes a column for Skeptical Inquirer magazine, and this is the latest. It's in this issue right here. Thank you. I didn't have my, <laughs> my copy yeah, on it. Handy. And Celestia Ward, a very good friend of ours, designed this cover, which is amazing. But um, the latest issue is this one. I just got it and I've been sitting down reading it. But um, JD does a column not only in print in the magazine, but you can find his column for Skeptical Inquire on the websites, uh, skepticalinquire.org. I guess it's org. 
Well, and yeah. uh, you can pull those up and they're very well written, just like the presentation you just saw. It's just orderly, factual, follows the citations and they go, you know, but his latest one that he did in this magazine was about the, the boy, and it was a boy, not a girl, that was in The Exorcist and, and who that person actually is or was and uh, the story behind it and how they got outed as to who they were. But there's, I mean, there was a, it was an actual story that was real is it really was a, ch a child who supposedly had been possessed by a demon and so on. Sadly, he's dead, right? Yes, he died uh, last year. Yeah, so it's a great story. I didn't know it before. And I think you just did something on the, did you just do something in Amityville Horror? I know Kenny was talking about, no, it was Exorcist. Kenny, yeah, yeah. You were doing The Exorcist, I believe, yeah. right? I have never seen that movie all the way through. I'm sorry to say. We need to have an exorcism I, party. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm honestly not a fan. Like, th there's parts that I enjoy, but I, I don't know. I, I just can't find it scary, you know, and, and. Well, you were, it was the 70s. It was terrifying in the 70s. I was, I, was, I, I guess. I was 17. I wasn't allowed to go. So I never saw it because it was in the theaters. And I remember, I remember reading years later, whenever people were talking about demonic possession and how these people were levitating from the bed and that the priests and the people in the room would be yelling, hold her down, hold her down. <laughs> and then the scientists were all, let her go, let her go. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> Will she float to the ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i've you know and i at one point in time legitimately believed that that demons were real and uh, i don't know i just never found it interesting never found it scary yeah i, I like the quote from uh beetlejuice where he, he says he's seen it like uh, i forget what it is and my wife's gonna kill me if she knows i didn't get it right but he's you know seen it like 67 times or whatever and it keeps getting funnier every time he sees it Oh, a, a, a movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a quote from Beetlejuice. He says... Uh, somebody will know the answer really quick yeah. in the next 30 seconds. How much you want to bet? Yeah, I can't get the number right. Oh, Linda Rosa said she saw The Exorcist in Ecuador and people ran screaming from the theater. I mean, at the time it came out, they, you know, they talked about people fainting in the theater and... How much of that was a promo, though, to get people... Right. Ready? I think they even said something about, like, women were having miscarriages in the theater. I remember that. I remember <laughs> that. Women were having... Well, what a great, great marketing campaign. My God. Um, the IV scene was highly realistic, yes. Okay. That was a real... Fun fact, that was a real IV. That's why it was highly realistic. Oh. Well, the, and the, if I remember... What? Sorry, the movie is... I've seen it 167 times, and it yes. keeps getting funnier every time. Right. What yes. movie is it? Thank you. That was Michael Keaton in uh, Beetlejuice. Well, what, what movie was he talking about? The Exorcist? Yeah. The Exorcist. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I've seen the Exorcist 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every time. Thank you, Vincent. I knew somebody would have the answer. So let's end this because I know that it's been a long day for most of us, including myself sitting in this chair. But thank you so much, JD. I really appreciate it. You did a fantastic job. It was a nice way to end the, um, the event.